okay. Um, I think the last video that I posted, we were at uh, 168 in one death. Uh, I didn't record anything for yesterday. I meant to, I just didn't. Uh, it was a little overwhelming, some of the stuff that was being talked about and, and gone over with from the governor. I do watch the uh, White House press conferences as well. They're just a little bit harder to follow than than I think what they should be. There's a lot of self-praising and a lot of um, over-information as far as I think what the general public wants to know. I mean, it's nice to know that... that um, that FEMA's doing their thing. Of course, I guess you kind of expect that. I mean, I do. Uh, just because I think that it's a little overwhelming for a president and his staff to, to oversee everything. So then you put FEMA in charge of that, and they, they kind of take over from there, and they report back to him. But uh, uh, the self-praising bit, <laughs> it's what he does. You know, he's done it for, for three and a half years. I think that he's. I think that he is a good president. And he means well. I just think that he has a hard time getting it across to people. So we'll leave it at that. Um, the information that 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 they're, that they're giving us through the through the White House press conferences are are drastic. Uh, you see, New York and California, Illinois, Washington State. Now I believe. Um, there's some other places that are implementing uh, shelter-in-place orders, which are basically don't leave your house unless you absolutely have to. I think we're getting that order today. I'm not 100% sure it's Sunday, March 22nd. The reason I say that I think we're getting that order is uh, we jumped 78 cases of infection and two more deaths in a 24-hour period, which puts us at right at 274 infected and three deaths. Um, he did say yesterday that this was a pivotal moment with Ohio. Uh, what we did yesterday and today will determine on how many people die in the state. A little drastic. Uh, but I think that that's the kind of things that probably need to be said. And it, it opens your eyes up, it opened mine up. Um, like I said in the other videos, you, you, you go through the self-containment process before, and it's really not that big of an issue. You just stay inside because you don't want to get sick. Nobody wants to get sick. Nobody's like, nobody should be like that. You know, they, there, there's a couple of, there's, there's a handful of us here where I'm at that, you know, before self-distancing and, and, shelter and placing became an issue when we would see each other all of us would have pretty much the same stories about how you know back in january back from november through january the end of january the collective of us all had the same symptoms and all went through the same deal and it's all pretty much the same stuff that they're talking about right now that doesn't mean that we want it again. That doesn't mean that we think that we're immune. I don't want somebody to cough on my throat to f for me to figure out that I'm immune to it. Basically, that just means that it 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 was it's been here for a minute. It just wasn't tested. You know, we all just kind of thought, well, it's the flu. It's what happens where we're at, and we just deal with it every every season, and that's the gist of it. So nobody really went and got tested and it wasn't a big issue and nobody really thought twice about it until this situation. And then as the more you talk to other people, the more you realize, hey, listen, you know, we all pretty much had this. Um, so my advice is, is if what we had is anything close to what, it, if, if that's in fact what it was, it's terrible. I mean, it, it is absolutely terrible i thought there were a few nights where and i i've only told a few people this and it's a little weird putting it out there on the internet but there were a couple nights that i sat with the phone in my hand ready to call 911 because i thought either i was having a heart attack or that was going to be where i wrote my my end chapter in life was there you know so it's it's important to realize that this virus isn't turning people into zombies. It's not making people chew other people's faces off. You're not 
developing sores and lesions and, and whatnot and roaming through the woods of, of, of America looking for brains to eat. The reason they're stressing the importance behind staying at home and staying away from one another is because there's a shortage of supplies to take care of the people that are sick. There is a shortage of supplies. and It's not that it's contagious enough to kill you because they're seeing a lot of positive recovery. But they're also seeing a lot of death involved in this because elderly people, because it's transmitted so fast between young people to old people, or even now young people are getting it. And there's an influx of patients, and there's not enough, they keep saying PPE, for people that don't know what that is, that's personal protection equipment. Masks, gloves, gowns, respirators, ventilators, that kind of stuff. That's the stuff that there's a shortage of. They're trying to get a grip on that now. I believe Trump said something about GM and Mercedes and Fiat and a bunch of other companies that are changing their, their methods and to help them produce those things. There's a there's a distillery here in Ohio that went from making craft beer to making hand sanitizer. So there's people that are out there that are trying to help supplement that shortage of supplies. But the fact of the matter is, the reason it's so bad and it's hurting people is because there's not enough... There's not enough equipment out there to safely test and to safely monitor people. And so they shut testing facilities down because they have all these neat and, and, and super cool tests to do. But they can't test them all at the same location because they're different, they're different styles of tests. They all tell you the same thing. But there's just different things that go involved that are involved into figuring out what they are. So the same basic message that was in the last video heed the warnings it's here it's i mean it's it's 100 percent real i went down to to pick up some packages the other day and the lady at the booth was in a mask and gloves and it hit you right there that other people are seeing the severity of it and other people are trying their best to heed the warning to it that you know if you don't have to go out don't go out you know i went out today got a little bit of groceries checked on some people's houses for them and you feel like you're absolutely in the crosshairs every time you walk out of your door. I do anyway. You know, being having prior medical history and, and being, you know, susceptible to, to everything that they're possibly telling you that you can get. It's scary. And it should be scary for everybody. Because I don't enjoy being sick. You know, even if they're saying, oh, you'll recover from it. It's not killing you. It's only killed 0.003% or 0.0003%. It doesn't, to me, it doesn't matter. I don't want to get sick. I don't want to be thrown up into the toilet, the place where I take a dump. I don't want to be running 103 fever for a week. I don't want to feel like I've got to sit and drink gallons upon gallons of water just to stay hydrated, just to face diarrhea after all that. Who wants that? For the people out there that, that have to that have to go to work, you know, I, I, I have a, a very, very dear friend of mine that, that works in the oil fields. And to him, I, I, I'm i scared to death for you, dude. I really am. You know, I know that you what you guys are doing is helping supply everybody with what they need. But at the same time, as family, it's worrisome. For those of my friends and family that are in the restaurant and bar industry, take the time off. I know that you I know that you think you can't afford it, but if you pay attention to what they're telling you on the TV, they're trying to supplement that stuff so that you can get it. As far as unemployment goes, it's a nightmare for everybody. It's a nightmare for people that have never had to do it before. This was my first year doing it and it was an absolute shit show. I got so confused, I had to go and ask for help from people that have been on it for a really long time, every season. But I figured it out. It's a waiting process game. Now it's not so much anymore because they're saying they're taking away the weak weight. Great. Perfect. That's even better for you. File and let it sit and then pay attention to what's going on. But don't think that because you're not getting an immediate answer, it doesn't work. Because it does. People that are renting, people that are leasing apartments, property, stop panicking. It's only going to make your situation worse. I'm under the same umbrella that you are i rent you know i'm trying to figure things out i'm trying to save what little bit of unemployment that comes in just so that i don't have to worry about that but in that general case where you feel like you just are overwhelmed call and talk to somebody they'll help you